And then Jesus told him another little story. And he said, when you get invited to a place to eat, you get invited to a wedding or something, you get invited to a dinner, to a banquet, he said, don't sit, don't just go in and sit down at the place of honor. Don't go and sit at the head table. Don't go and sit at the front of the room. He said, when you go in, you go find the, 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 the most humble seat in the building and you sit there. And he said, then, if they want you to come sit at the head table, they'll come get you. He said, it's better to go sit at the least seat and be called to the front than to go sit yourself down at the front and then come along and say, hey, buddy, this seat's not for you. Get <laughs> yourself back down there to the lower seat. You're not honored around here. You see the difference? So Jesus is saying, you need to have a humble heart about yourself. And then he tells the, he tells the guy that's having the dinner here today, he said, look, thank you for the invitation. He didn't say that, but I'm putting that in there for free. He said, you know what you ought to do? You've invited all these people. They can have you home for them, with them for Sunday dinner next Sunday. You've invited people that can do the same for you. What you ought to do is go out into the world and invite people that don't have anything to feed you. You ought to go out here and invite some of these people that don't have anything at all. Some of these people that are wondering where their next meal is coming from. Why don't you go feed them? Thank you for feeding me, but everybody wants to feed me. Why don't you feed somebody that nobody wants to feed? Just some food for thought. Let's look at it. Number one. We need to know that people are more important than things. People are more important than the stuff in this world. People are more important than our positions in life. We've kind of gotten away from it. We've lost the fact that people are important. If we want to impact people's lives, we don't need to set out and try to impress them. What we need to do is set out to just love them. If you want to have an impact on somebody's lives, in all their life, be nice to them. Be courteous to them. Do something for them. Don't go doing stuff for people that can pay you back. It's okay to do something, do a favor for somebody that can do one for you. Nothing wrong with that. It's okay to try to do something, a favor for somebody, hoping, well, you know, maybe this will help me advance in life. But we need to put our efforts towards doing things for people that cannot do for themselves. Now, I've had this discussion with some of you in the past. Um, there's such a thing as doing stuff for people that won't do for themselves, and that's not what I'm talking about. I don't mean metal, but I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not, trying to, not trying to put guilt on you if there are people that won't do for themselves. The Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. So, uh, you know, we're talking about people that cannot do for themselves. People are more important than things. People are more, more important than this church building right here. People are more important than this new building we want to build over here. If we try to build a new building, we're not doing anything, but if we're reaching people, loving people, demonstrating the love of God to them, then we're doing what God wants us to do. The purpose of a new building is not so we can say, hey man, we got a pretty building up here. It's so that we can minister to folks. Thank God for the finances that he gives to this church. God has blessed this church. The money's not, to, God, God doesn't bring money into this church for it to sit in the back and we can say, hey, we got a nice camp down there in glad time and assembly of God. The money is to minister to people. If you don't want to give your tithes and offerings to minister to people, don't give it. If you're not interested in your money going into the lives of people so that we can do things and minister to people, then don't give it. I'm scared. People, but people are more important than things, more important than money, more important than anything. It's all about the souls. Yes. God yes. loves people. Yes. It's almost like this. God created the world. And every time he finished a phase, he would say, it is good. But then he created man and woman. He created them in his image. There's a difference in this world that is good and human beings that he created, which are the crown of his creation. He said this stuff is good. You know what he's going to do? One of these days he's going to strike a Holy Ghost match to it and it's going to burn up. But the souls that he created are eternal. You will live forever. And that's the reason God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. Number two, the rule of life is love, not law. Love God. Love people. You remember the Ten Commandments? The first four have to do with loving God. The second six have to do with loving people. Rules are important, but they are secondary to the well-being of God's children. Rules are important, but they are secondary to the well-being of God's children. 
You've got the Ten Commandments. You've got the rules that we are called to live by. Holiness and righteousness and all of that. They're important. They're ru- I'm not trying to tell you that the rules are not important at all. They keep us safe. The laws of the land keep us safe. The Bible says that thou shalt not speed. Oh, okay, the law says that. The Bible says it. But we put sirens on top of vehicles that we want to give permission to speed because we say, hey, the cops and the, and the ambulances and the fire trucks, they need to be able to get somewhere hurt. We say, go to it. So there are rules, and I'm not saying they are not important, but what is more important is the people that those lives affect. And if a man accidentally walks 51 yards, let's go ahead and give him a couple extra yards so we can get back home at night. If our neighbor's house is on fire, let's go ahead and throw the rules out the window and go put our neighbor's house out, put the fire out so we'll have a place to live. What kind of Christians are we if we only follow the rules just to justify ourselves and to make us feel like we are more righteous than other people? You understand that? What kind of Christians are we if we say, well, now in our church, we don't believe in doing this and this and this and this and that and that and that and that. You know what? Maybe we don't need to just go telling people the rules. Maybe we need to tell them about a God that loves them. And as they fall in love with Jesus, God will put the rules in their heart. Just say For Christians, our success is not in keeping the rules. It is in loving people. I'm not saying don't keep the rules, whatever you feel like the rules are. We certainly should obey the word of God, but we ought not to neglect loving people. Number three, humanity, or I'm sorry, humility is more important <coughs> than reputation. Humility is more important than how others esteem us. That bunch down there, Bunch of self righteous folks. I don't say that to us. You shouldn't go around with our noses in the air thinking, well, you know what, I'm a Christian and I can't be seen with these people. You know what Jesus did? He came into this world. And he got out there with the sinners and he ate with them. He got out there with the tax collectors. Everybody looked down on the tax collectors. They didn't like them, but Jesus went and ate with them. Jesus went down to the places where the people of low reputation were. The, lead, the religious leaders didn't like it. They didn't like it. They, they, they said, hey, this isn't right. But you know what? Jesus went where people were. He said he came to seek and to save those who were lost. We're going to impact our world. We're going to have to get where people are to impact people. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten son. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten got the Son. That's God's impact on the world. I believe He expects us to have an impact. Too. No excuses. No excuses. Let's just get at it. Will you stand with me this morning as we come to a close of the Just leave me with you. I want to tell you something. I'm as good at making excuses as the next guy. God's not interested in our excuses. Excuses are the ways that we try to justify ourselves, try to make ourselves look better. Let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. God, here I am. I know I'm supposed to be more to people than I am, and I, I, I'm, I'm finding it difficult. I'm not going to make excuses, Lord. I just want to tell you that living the life, being the people, what you call me these kind of times, I want you to help me. God's not asking you to do something that you're not going to eventually enjoy doing. God's not going to ask you to do something that you're going to hate with a passion. I find that most of the time when I reach out and do something by faith for the kingdom of God, I might be scared, but God helps me. I might not really want to do it, but God helps me to enjoy it. It feels good to do something for people in the name of Jesus. God will help us. This world needs impact. He's called us to do it. It is near and dear to the heart of God. It is our mission in life to have an impact. Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, you know what? You say, Joey, you know what? I, I don't even know where to begin. 
Well, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, that's where you begin. I'm not here today to ask you to join Glad Tidings Assembly of God Church. I'm not here today to ask you to give money to Glad Tidings Assembly of God Church. What I'm here today to ask you is, will you become a part of the family of God? You can go to church here. We'd love for you to. There's a lot of good churches around in this town. You can go to one of them if you want to. We will rejoice with you today if you will become a part of the family of God. And you do that by just making yourself humble before God and saying something to this effect. God, I confess to you that there's a lot of stuff in my life. Sin. Wrong stuff. And I give it over to you and I ask you to save my soul. In Jesus' name. He'll do that. He'll do that. The Bible says if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and that God has raised Him from the dead, that we shall be saved. Because whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's very simple. No rules to keep. Nothing else to do. You'll want to. You'll want to. But you don't have to. It's all about humbling your heart before God. And loving you. If you want to be saved, come. Come quickly today. It will amaze you what God will do for your life.